discovered opportunities for hunting and trade in these lands. I gave up my search for Jotunheim long ago. Leave that for the younger, more hope. I felt blessed to lead such a loyal crew. We've become a family over the years. And now, my family is cursed. Boy, what a sad story. Yes. We should help him. Really? You are surprised. Well, yeah. I didn't think you'd care about helping a spirit. Fighting more Hellwalkers is good experience for you. Oh. Shrine about a giant lady with lots of books and, and visions. And we'll pick this up later. Crew? That's a tough crew. And all were his responsibility. That's a lot of responsibility. Does it frighten you? Uh... Responsibility. Oh, uh, no. I don't think so. I mean, I think it used to. But not as much anymore. Why is that? Well, being out here. With you. Makes me feel more grown up. Another shipwreck under the water. The mirror. There was a shrine about a giant lady with lots of books and visions. Ah, that would be Gloa, the knowledge keeper. She was a gifted sorceress, who gathered every tome of arcane wisdom she could find in the realms, all in the hopes of augmenting her powers of prophecy, that she might find her lost husband, Arvandil. But it was not her husband she would glimpse in her visions, for it was Groa, seeing longer and farther than any before or since, who witnessed Ragnarok, the end and the beginning. When Odin caught word of her ultimate prophecy, he maneuvered to obtain her knowledge and hoard it for himself. Groa knew Odin as a long-time patron of her services, and so she welcomed him into her library as a friend. What she did not know is that Odin himself was behind her husband's disappearance, having used his enchantments to conceal his death at Thor's hands from her sight. Smiling, jealous Odin took her by the throat, and with his very hands he stole her library and a life for his own. I always knew Odin was bad, but that's just 
Ruthless? Barbaric? Heartless? That's Odin. In fact, we would do well to sit here in silence for the next few moments and reflect on Odin's capacity for cruelty. And so... Reflect longer. One vicious son of a bitch! Years ago, yes. I led men in battle. Were you a good leader? It is complicated. Did you no ever... more questions, boy. Focus on the task at hand. Yes, sir. Ed, you are full of stories. When will you tell one that entertains? I beg your pardon? You just insulted me. Yeah, I got that. So you want a corker, do you? Very well, my brothers. I'll tell you the story of Brunia, the brawler. The real story. There was a huge battle, right? His shrine had him in the middle, fighting off Aesir. A pretty story, but... No. Brunia, you see, was born with neither head nor heart. So the giants had to complete him with stone. He was strong, to be sure, but also a perfect simpleton. Odin met him wandering in Midgard one day, found him so amusing, so harmless, so gullible, that he invites him back to his palace in Asgard. There he gives Hrungnir his fill of mead and goads him into all manner of boasts and antics, all for the amusement of the court. I was there. I saw the Aesir laugh as Hrungnir leapt upon his shield and swore he'd kill us all and take our womenfolk back to Jotunheim. Then Thor shows up. And does he laugh? Oh, no. Thor takes one look at the drunken stone buffoon and brings down Mjolnir on his head so hard that he's got chunks of Hrungnir in his own skull to this day. Thor is so startled by the face full of rock he doesn't notice Runir's body topple right onto him with a sickening crunch. And again, 
The roars of laughter echo through the palace halls. That's an awful story, Mummer. Nothing like the ones Mother told me. Might that be a lesson, my son? Truth is seldom so pretty as myth and legend. <laughs>